Chapter 2 Transcending Dominance Hierarchies Success Predictors A question as old as time is why some people end up rich while others end up poor. Why do some people rise to the top of society while others end up at the bottom? Luck is a part of it. In any macro-dominance hierarchy, randomness is a factor. That aside, there are certain factors that dramatically increase the probability of a person making it towards the top of a macro-dominance hierarchy, rather than ending up at the bottom. Too long didn't read for this essay. There are seven key factors driving a person's ability to transcend a macro-dominance hierarchy. Energy and industriousness. Intelligence and IQ. Cunning. Stress tolerance and neuroticism, ruthlessness and agreeableness, physical attractiveness and halo effect, and family wealth. The best case scenario is that you are high energy, high IQ, high cunning, high stress tolerance, high ruthlessness, good looking like me, and born into a rich family. The worst case scenario is that you are low energy, low IQ, low cunning, low stress tolerance, low ruthlessness, ugly as shit, and born into a poor family. Energy In every society it is the case that people with high energy levels stand a better chance of making it to the top than people with low energy levels. This is most obvious in capitalist societies where many high-paying positions explicitly require one to have the energy to work 60-plus hours a week. Having above-average energy levels is necessary, but not sufficient for having any chance of going from the bottom of a macro-dominance hierarchy to the top. You have competitors who will work long hours. If they do and you don't, the probability you will be able to keep up with them is zero. In modern capitalist societies, see America, the use of drugs for the sake of maximizing energy levels is common in many professions. Many working in finance, law and sales use stimulants such as Adderall, Ritalin and Modafinal. Nobody is working 70 hours a week on water alone. Intelligence, IQ. In every society, Intelligence is an advantage for rising to the top of the hierarchy. As technology becomes more advanced and decision-making becomes more complex, the advantage high IQ people have over low IQ people intensifies. In a hunter-gatherer tribe, a smart man has only a slight advantage over a dumb man. He may be slightly better at hunting. However, in a technologically advanced society with computers and the internet, a smart man is going to be light years ahead of a dumb man. He can become a software engineer, while the dumb man is stuck as a janitor. Part of the reason high IQ people end up at the top of hierarchies is because they are faster than everyone else. IQ to a large extent measures speed and almost every domain of performance in life, certainly every domain where money can be made, it's a race against either time or against competitors. As such, it's no surprise that high IQ people, who are faster than most people, tend to be the ones who win. Cunning Machiavellian intelligence Cunning, sometimes euphemistically called people skills, is an advantage, if not basic requirement for transcending dominance hierarchies. Nobody in the history of the world has ever gone from the bottom of a society to the top without an above-average level of cunning. If you are capable of charming, persuading, deceiving, and reading people's personalities accurately, the probability of you transcending any hierarchy is far better than if you are incapable of doing these things. If a lack of cunning is dragging you down, Reading the 48 Laws of Power will wake you up to the game you've been playing your entire life, but were never consciously aware of. Stress Tolerance Note Stress tolerance and neuroticism, Big Five personality trait, are inverses of one another. 
they correlate negatively. Those with high stress tolerances are more likely to rise up any hierarchy than those with low stress tolerances. Fear affects performance negatively, and as such, a high stress tolerance is an advantage in any domain of performance including the domains one must succeed in for the sake of rising up any given hierarchy. In capitalist societies, you will find there are many high-paying professions where an above-average stress tolerance is a basic job requirement. Finance, law, sales and medicine are all examples. Ruthlessness Note Ruthlessness and agreeableness, big five personality traits, are inverses of one another. They correlate negatively. It is both sad and true that ruthless people are far more likely to transcend any macro hierarchy than compassionate people. In any society, there will inevitably be opportunities for a person to advance their own position at the expense of someone else. A ruthless person is likely to jump on any such opportunity, whereas a compassionate person is likely to refuse any such opportunity. In the long run, this leads to ruthless people transcending macro hierarchies more often than compassionate people. In capitalist societies, it is the case that the big five trait agreeableness and income correlate negatively. The reason for this is rather straightforward. Business involves endless zero-sum competition and negotiation. Ruthless or disagreeable people are far more comfortable with this than compassionate or agreeable people. In the long run, this leads to ruthless people making more money, if for no other reason than because they negotiate more aggressively when it comes to the matter of their own salary. There is a paradox. For the sake of maximising the probability of making it to the top of the hierarchy, you must be willing to use any strategy or tactic available that will be effective, even if it is immoral or harms others. At the same time, you must conceal any evil you do. You must always maintain the pretense of being a morally good person, or at least avoid the appearance of being a morally reprehensible person. If you appear to be a monster, everyone will become hostile towards you, and this will be your undoing. Use evil for the sake of advancing your interests, while at the same time maintaining the outward appearance of virtue. Looks, Halo Effect As Cialdini detailed in his book, Influence, being physically attractive gives a person a halo effect. Good-looking people are assumed to be more competent, more trustworthy, and more likeable than ugly people even though in reality the correlation between physical attractiveness and competence or trustworthiness is zero. Good-looking men are more likely to be hired for jobs than ugly men, and are more likely to be promoted up corporate hierarchies than ugly men, all else equal. In most hierarchies, most of the time, being good-looking is an advantage for transcending the hierarchy. Sadly, the human race is indeed this superficial. In life, you have two choices. Be an ignorant fool or a brilliant strategist. Buy the audiobook now to learn how to be the latter. Scroll down to find the link in the description. Click on the link. Purchase it now. Listen to the entire audiobook from start to finish. Then, watch your life transform.